Hello, Martin, and welcome to episode 43 of Illuminating Rounds. We are as professional as ever. How are you doing? I'm all right. Thank you very much, Dave. Yeah, absolutely fine. I haven't had heating for three days, so we've had a bit of a cold snap here, but the heating is back, so I'm feeling good. I thought that you lived in a life of perpetual fire anyway, because I remember when we played in front of your fire, and that was my favourite ever ASL game. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up with one very red face because it was so yeah. hot. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's fantastic having an open fire, but what the problem with it is it only heats one room, you know, and the rest of the house of the computer is not by the fire. So uh, yeah, is it true? Very, very hot. Is mm. it true that like the fire kind of sucks heat from the from other rooms, or does it just feel like it's colder in, in the other rooms when I don't know. I have read that. I've been I've I've read that it's a very inefficient way of heating a house because you bring it draws cold air into the house. Um whether that's true or not, I don't know. It certainly okay. feels warmer in the house when I've had a fire than okay. when I haven't had a fire. It is absolutely perishingly cold. <laughs> well, anyway, more from um, Central Heating Weekly next time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should talk about something else. I think we're more qualified to talk about heating our houses. You asked then. how I was, you know. <laughs> and you're all I'll vaccinated. You. You've had your first vaccine? I've had my first vaccination, yeah. Okay, all right. And I literally have just booked mine up where you were, you were patiently waiting for me to book my one up, so... The nineteenth of April, so we're 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 very close to being out of play live. My question is, do we keep with this format, or do we go back to our like kind of uh, thing? So I would like feedback from everybody as to yeah. whether you prefer our earlier episodes where we were face to face, a um, little bit harder to show you the flow of the game um, because we're kind of taking snapshots uh, on each yeah. turn. Um, yeah. But it's a little bit more personable, isn't it? And a little bit more, you know, we're next to each other. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah. to see the exciting locations we were going to, which I miss. <laughs> we can't, can't do that. Yeah, it'd be very interesting what people have got to say about that. So yeah, definitely, if people send us send us their thoughts or make comments, obviously in the in the chat underneath right. this, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Um, a lot of the tournament games are coming to a close. So if you are in the Illuminating Rounds tournament uh, and you haven't finished your game yet or you haven't started your game yet, please make every effort to get it done this month. Mm. Um, to give you an idea, I think five or six of the games now have been completed. Uh, I know yours is done, Martin, and I didn't get to play in this one. A um, little bit of a controversial choice, this one. This one was a uh, a patron suggestion now of which one to play. And mm. some people have liked it and some people have disliked it. It's um, did, What did you think of the scenario itself? I really enjoyed it. And do you know what? It would be it, it, it would be it's a very interesting scenario in terms of using half-tracks and, uh, and, and using the special capabilities of half-tracks. Right. I thought it was yeah. really interesting. Yeah, yeah good. Good. Excellent. Okay. All right. Well, we'll find out more um, possibly next time when we get all of the, yeah. the log files in and we'll see see how that all looked. Um, yeah. And we'll see who's in the next round for that. Um, I'm excited. I know you are, Martin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Look absolutely. At that. So what are we going to do today? What are we going to do today? So we've got so much. It's so packed, this this show. So packed. We're going to talk about our top five World War II films. Yep. Yep. Uh, we are going to talk about the seaborne assault scenario that I played against Toby. Mm -hmm. um, poor guy, you know, he's, you know <laughs> he struggles against me, but you know, it's a, it's a service. It's a service you do for him. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to talk about some very interesting guys. Uh, Dimitri, guy from Russia, who's yep. uh, been organising something. We're going to discuss the merits. I think. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Yeah. Come from that. yeah. And we also got we got oh, a patron. Go on. Of course. No, go ahead. No. Okay, yeah, well, so we've got a, a Patreon yeah. giveaway. Um, so now these, these items have been given away before. So now this is the official, it's too late to get these back if you, if you were offered these before. These are going now. Um, we've got a couple of operations magazines. Uh, we're cool. going to do a very, uh, the Commissar pack, which is out of print these days. You can't get this in print anymore for people who are interested. Cool. And we have a Winter Offensive bonus pack without the maps, but obviously very suitable for Vassal. Um, all going into one lucky patron. So thank you again to all the patrons that have uh, have subscribed and has, have joined us. Uh, they help us do things like this and host the archive and all the good things that we're able to do. So again, thank you to all our patrons for that. Um, Absolutely. And yeah, so this is starting to clear my desk off. And again, that was all courtesy of our anonymous donor. So again, thank you to thank you to him for that. Um, or her. Or her. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, we've got to be careful. Could have been a <laughs> um, We don't want to narrow it down for anyone. That's right, yeah. yeah. To be fair, if we'd have said her, it might have really <laughs> narrowed it down. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so 
let's talk first of all about um well dimitri so dimitri got in touch uh so we've mentioned him before he was part of the i i am i'm assuming it's the same dimitri and, and apologies if it's not um i mean how many dimitris are there in in russia i don't know can't be many <laughs> can't be many um uh, but anyway uh they, they told us a, a way what they're doing uh which is really interesting and, and it's something i want to talk to you martin about about how we you, you're trying to count the number of dimitris that you know <laughs> I mean, so, I, I teach in the UK and I've taught two Russian kids called Dimitri. Really? <laughs> yes, I suspect. Maybe they were both the ASL players. I don't know. I maybe, mean, maybe. 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 So yeah. what they do is they said that two of the guys play the scenario of the month uh, from the scenario archive. And they have a Discord channel of about 12 or so people, uh, you know, other Russian players who sit and commentate and, and kind of chat about the game. And I thought that's that's a really interesting way of playing for a start. It's a really nice way. And I think... We did a little bit of that when we did our Twitch game and we did our YouTube game. It's quite nice to have a little bit of commentary. The problem there is that you're always 10 or 15 seconds ahead of the chat. That's one of the Discord, obviously, is a little bit more uh, instant. But yeah. what, I, what it got me thinking about was the idea of group play. And I don't think we see this at all, really, in, in ASL, where, for example, you split a team up into you know three or four players per side. And not like how we've done, certainly in the past, where... Uh, one player takes the infantry, maybe one person takes the armour, maybe one person takes the third nationality that might be part of the attacking or defending force. But actually, you play as a team and you participate as a team. So it may be that one person takes a particular lead on a turn and maybe that rotates through. And I don't think this is what the, the Russian guys are doing. But it got me thinking, would that be a nice way to really explore deeply a scenario? Because as you've seen, that we, you know, and, and we're not unique in any, any way, it's very easy to make mistakes, isn't it, in ASL? You know, not only setting the boards up wrong or setting the forces up wrong or anything like that, but also in terms of just just getting the wrong handle of what you should be doing for a scenario. If you look at my Hatton in Flame scenario, where um, where I just didn't use enough smoke at the start of the didn't use any smoke at the start of the scenario, having four pairs of eyes means that potentially both sides really do play to their kind of maximum if you can do it. And I know it's it's hard to do. So I wanted to talk to you about the idea of the merits of that. What do you think mm. of that? And could you see that as a a way forward to play some scenarios as a group, as a group exercise? It's really you do see people do some things a little bit like it. You see people playing like very big scenarios, like uh, like the last bid or first bid or right. what, massive games like that. But there, there they've got a geographical section each, haven't they? Which is which is not what you're talking about. Mm. But I suppose they talk about strategy and they come up with the basic approaches but that's to people aren't watching each other's individual moves it's essentially people playing three separate scenarios that are just very closely connected um i think what i think is interesting about what you're talking about is that you're it, you used the term earlier like it was always being a spectator sport and it's like even asl players tend not to think of it as a spectator sport right. it's a bit slow and stuff like that but where you're all like deeply in, engaged could be it could be really interesting and i think you would learn a lot because mm. you know there'll be people there who who see things that you don't see right um and you know it's your say it's your turn you're on the, on the spotlight you're doing turn two or something um you know somebody says to you you know i, I don't think you should fire that unit yet or whatever you know you put, that's 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 a little bit of a key unit it's something you it's something you missed mm. um but it, it helped you to yeah, I'd learn, learn a little bit of gritty, learn some tactics and stuff. Yeah, that right. sounds really interesting. So I guess I guess one of the problems is that if you've played um, any kind of cooperative games, um, they, they t run into this problem called the alpha gamer kind of problem, where yeah. there's generally yeah. one player who's a little bit more yeah. you know, either experienced yeah. or skilled. And essentially, they're, they're playing the game, aren't they? They're just telling you, no, don't yeah. do that, do that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, and you've got to try and avoid that. But if you can work through that, to yeah. get to a point where you're all kind of contributing and you're all trying to, and it's almost like a study of a scenario, a group study yeah, rather yeah, than a, a yeah. group playing of it. Yeah, I think that would yeah. be really interesting. So that got me thinking then, is there a room for, do you think, a team-based tournament? And, and probably pairs is, is a practical thing. Don't don't let your face give it away. <laughs> but but the idea of people entering as a tournament as a team, and as a team yeah. of two, you, you could be one if one person can make it, for example. It's not like a requirement. But obviously, yeah. you're you're hindered with only one person. Do you think that's something that we could explore, or is that something you'd be interested in exploring? If someone was to set that up. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we talked about it a little bit, didn't we, before we were recording? And we there was a couple of problems, I suppose, not necessarily fatal problems. One is that the difficulty of how do two polite people 
come or four people potentially come to a kind of a joint decision about something you know that can be like that kind of committee trying to make a, a decision with um you know we have it me and you have it when we're playing toby it's not kind of clear you know you're not really in charge i'm not really in charge and, and you know whatever um and sometimes i think we end up with a strategy that falls between the two you know and it's not mm. neither mine nor yours I think. Right. I think that's a problem and i think there is a bit of an issue about people discussing strategy in front of the opponent you know if you're thinking your opponent doesn't know what you're thinking but if you're saying don't fire that because that's gonna you know want to keep that because otherwise he can get around the side you've just told the opponent right. that he could potentially get around the side or also that you're not going to fire that unit at other moves you know yeah and, and yeah granted the player you know players could sort of try not to listen i mean i think me and you do that we know we sit and watch each other set up each other's hips and like, <laughs> I, 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 I sort of know you're not looking you sort of know i'm not looking but uh, you know we just trust, trust each other with that yeah. don't we that we kind of shut our minds off yeah. or whatever yeah uh, that's but would you want to do that in a tournament? Maybe, maybe not if it was a, a tournament scene. So yeah. those are my, those are my neg they're very negative thoughts. Okay. So, I mean, that doesn't, that's not because I don't think it's a good idea. I just think there's some things to think through. That's mm. all. Do I you mean, think, I like the idea. It, it, mm. Could you compare it to doubles in tennis versus like a singles where maybe it's not taken quite as seriously, but maybe. it's still an interesting way to play or to try. Maybe, maybe yeah. if, if there are some people that would be willing to try it, they yeah. could have a go at it. If there's a group of four of you out there that, you know, potentially would be up for giving this a go, two against two, but but it is a two, two on two. I um, mm. I, I think I mentioned this before. When when um, I can't remember if it was Intensive Fire. I was I'd never know the names of the tournaments here, whether it was Intensive Fire or Berserk or uh, one of them in the UK. That was the team tournament, and I always thought that the the way that they should be run, because everyone's got a better opinion of how tournaments should be run than the course, tournament yeah. organizer, but is mm. that you had to all play the same scenario and you had to all play the same side. So mm -hmm. the team captain kind of discussed with the other team captain, okay, we're going to be the British in this scenario. We'll give you the balance or whatever it is. And then mm -hmm. each one of you takes the British and each one of the others, rather than, because the way it worked, I think, was that you had the choice of scenarios mm -hmm. and you, you could end up playing all three different scenarios of three different players. And so it, Essentially, it was an individual game. It wasn't really a team yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. So this kind of boils it really down into like a, a doubles kind of game. So maybe so in actually that situation, you've got the alpha player there who's got a genuine purpose because they're prepping other people, yeah. showing them the pitfalls, showing them some of the key things as a discussion, and then you all go off and play your own your own game. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. Yeah, that's that's. I think if ever I set up a uh, a live tournament, that's how I would how I'd mm. run it. Maybe again in pairs, maybe not in, but it would yeah. be yeah, it would be that with a little bit of a twist because just because. I mean, we've all mm. played individual tournaments and they're great, but it's just quite nice to do it as a pair. There's always yeah. a problem with odd numbers and, and things like that. And, you know, I don't know mm. the answer to, to all these things. No, but, sure. Um, no. You know, it's a long way to go home if you've driven to Blackpool. <laughs> <laughs> You're the odd number. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, yeah, let us know if you, if you get a chance to do that or if you think that's worth doing or if you've done it before. Um, and shout out to the, uh, the Russian ASL guys. Thank you for your support. Uh, we appreciate mm. it. And we're sending off uh, some T-shirts to Russia, so for I'm, being such cool guys. Well, they are now. Let me tell you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> World War Two uh, films, Martin. Yes. Uh, do you yes. enjoy a World War Two film? Are you a uh, an aficionado of films? I even joined MGM the other day just so I could uh, watch them, and I'm as tight as a duck's bottom when it comes to paying <laughs> money to watch. <laughs> yeah, I, things on, uh, on Netflixy type program things. I have yeah. also joined MGM. I can't figure out yeah. how to unjoin MGM. By the way, <laughs> do you know what it was? I, actually, I unjoined. I did the free, <laughs> the free week. It's actually really quite complicated, but I got there in the end. So. We'll talk about it offline. <laughs> okay, you can, you can help me save some money. Um, yeah. All right. So let's let's talk about. I, I mean, I I enjoy a good war film. I think it's yeah. it's a bit of a solo pursuit in this house. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but if you can find yeah. a couple of hours yourself so let's let's talk films now we we've talked about these already between ourselves mm. and there's definitely a different theme isn't there you've gone you've gone kind of like um old school old school yeah old school so we're not mm. going to talk about your number five because it appears on my list higher up mm. so we're going to jump straight into my number five which is a film yes. called t34 continuing the russian theme um mm. t34 is a great film um again I, i'm sure it's not very historically accurate but it was all about these kind of um, this crew of this T thirty four tank and whether they could get it up and running again and the, the mechanical reliability problems mm. and if they can't get it running they're going to have to jump on with a you know going the infantry and they all were petrified of being infantry and 
Um, so I loved it. I, I, anything like that, I was I was really up for it. Worth worth trying to find it if you can find it. Um, is it Russian? Is it a Russian film? It is Russian. Yeah, yeah. So mm. subtitles. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it was Excellent. good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So okay, mm-hmm. on to your number four. And so my number four is Cross of Iron. And Cross of Iron, I think, is based on a Sven Hassel novel. Um, and it's um, it's 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 an oldish film. I'm sure people would find it if they looked it up. Um, and it's um, it's got James Coburn in it. It's got it's got a few relatively well known American faces actually. But it's quite a gritty. Feels more like a German film, although I don't think it's actually a German film. It's quite gritty. It's quite brutal. Um, yeah, so I, I haven't seen it for so long now. Um, I, I, I don't know if I can go into much detail about it. Okay. But, uh, very much enjoyed it. Yeah. It's, it, it, they're in they're in they're in holes in the ground, living in holes in the ground, and there's right. a, a brutal Russian uh, attacks on them and uh, and and stuff. Yeah, it's very cool. And has a squad leader kind of. You know, I think it does. Theme. Yeah, 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 you've yeah. got the, the title of the Cross of Iron. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. okay, very good. All right. Okay, so my number four is Fury. So now Fury is clearly not to everybody's tastes. It is certainly Hollywood's version of how Brad Pitt will save the war. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's even some pretty far fetched capabilities of what a showman yeah. can yeah. withstand. Yeah, <laughs> but having said that, I actually quite liked it. I liked the I liked the tension between the idea of the tank commander not really in control of his tank crew. Yeah. Um, it felt like um, it was you know it was a little bit art housey in in some scene. Yeah. There's the scene yeah. of him you know in the uh, in the French resistance or well, not the French resistance the French uh, citizens' house, isn't it? And there's the kind of the, the craziest. German, where, are they German? Are they? Are they, okay. they were Germans. Very possible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, there's that kind of scene, and and it, so I enjoyed it. I think um, you know it, it did make me wonder what dice these German tanks were rolling, German anti tank guns were rolling, like there was like eleven <laughs> after eleven after eleven. <laughs> <laughs> these guys. There's a, there's a scene where they attack with a Sherman, and kind of you've got the infantry. Uh, with them, which That's I right. thought looked very squad leader, advanced yeah. squad leader. As it was, where the 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 guns are firing across the the field from yeah. the the, the yeah. ridge line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they would have hit a few. Armored assault. That's armored assault, wasn't it? And, the, and you saw the guys in the in the foxholes, and you thought, what on earth are they doing there? That's yeah. just such yeah. a newbie era, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit like my game against Tom the other week. <laughs> How do I put this guy in a foxhole for? But, I, I enjoyed it. Um, it got to. It got too silly for me. I would, I wanted something that was more, was a little bit more realistic, and I enjoyed that first bit for that reason. I also thought that they were, yeah, maybe this is my own naivety, but they were insanely brutalised, weren't they, by, by their their experiences in war. Um, and what I've read is, you know, Americans were quite, you know, treated Germans civilly, you know, civil civilians in quite a, quite a decent way, and yeah. they, 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 they they were nothing like as barbaric as Brad Pitt's men yes. became. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'd be, I'd be. Yeah, it's, there's no, there's no single truth, is there? Obviously, I dare say some people were awful, but yes. um, yeah. it just seemed exaggerated. But then, yeah, do that to good. And I mean, there's the, there's the crazy scene, yeah. isn't there, with the, the turrets traversing and the, you know, the yeah. tiger trying, you know. But having said all that, I, I enjoyed it. I, yeah. I, it was, yeah. I, it was a good one. Anyway, anyway, okay, number, number three. So number three for me, so I'm definitely going old school now, is Bridge at Remagen. Now, uh, Remagen, I believe, is the first bridge that the Allies captured over the Rhine, um, and it's it's very squad leadery. I mean, it's a battle for a bridge, and um, and uh, 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 but um, but yes, it's very exciting. There's lots of there's lots of fighting. There's lots of tanks rolling rolling into things. It's a very old film. Must be must be fifties or early sixties or, or something like that. Um, and it's it's got this kind of slightly sort of manic pace to it. You know, they drive everywhere incredibly fast and stuff like that. And I think it was a bit like that, you know, people led, leading these sort of like very, very fast, you know, they get orders like, you know, just you just got to get to Remagen before the Germans blow it up kind of thing and just tearing down the road. They all seem a bit insane. It's um, it's good. It's right. good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to check these out. Uh, check my, num- out. my number three, uh, more Brad Pitt. I must have a saint going for him, clearly. Um, Inglorious, <laughs> Inglorious Bastards. So 
Clarence yeah. Parsons, Quentin Tarantino's, I think it's his best film, but I mean, you know, you could argue that there's, there's a couple of good ones in there. Um, sure. What a, what a good film. The, the opening sequence, the, the Jew Hunter guy is incredible. Um, I read something about the fact that I, I don't know the guy's name, but the, 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 the stunning actor that he is, and he's got this perfect French, German, English accent. And I heard yeah. that he was pretty much unknown. He'd just come on the scene and was, just this incredible character and he really you know he steals the show he's a proper steam sealer um so you know it's a crazy it's got a crazy ending to it you, you've seen the film martin or you've, you've watched i think i have done yeah. yeah yeah um but it was you know a different take on a war film and and certainly there's some throwbacks to kind of old war film kind of scenes and and mm. new style kind of tarantino-esque um but yeah i loved it um good classy film and you know again I'm sure not very historical at all. Well, clearly, clearly, by the end, it's not historical, but um, yeah. it's it's uh, definitely a, an interesting war film to to watch. Number two, we have the we same. Agree. We did have the same. Yeah, we had the same one. Go for it. Classic epic, a bridge too far. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, based on the novel. Uh, not the novel. It's a it's a sort of historical book book, isn't there? A bridge too far, which tells the story of uh, Arnhem. I think of all the films about the Second World War, this is the closest to a history lesson. Mm. It's, it goes everywhere, doesn't it? You see a bit of all the different air landings. You see you, you, know, you see 30 Corps. Um, it, it tries to explain some of the strategic difficulties and some of the strategic issues. Um, yeah, I think I most of what I know about <laughs> that Operation Mark <laughs> Garden came from that, from that film. Right. I think it was really good at trying to... Um, appease is the wrong word and apologise is probably not strong enough but the effect that the British had of, of the, the lack of involvement of the Polish troops and it was, is it Gene Hackman was it was is the yeah, yeah was it Gene right, yeah, yeah. Um, it is yeah. yeah just that whole kind of you know they just did, I didn't I don't know if they didn't trust the Polish very much or if they, it was genuinely the, was it was the weather that was stopping the Polish getting deployed there it was um, the weather initially I think yeah and I know I know there's some some complaints about the film being a little bit pro American and a bit mm. harsh on the British in it, I think for the whole push down the, the highway wasn't there. Um, but in you're always going to get those sorts of debates, don't you? You yeah. get it over the difference between what people think about Montgomery in uh, Normandy and the British right. in Normandy and stuff is a sort of British American divide yeah. on, on, yeah. on of opinion, but it's, um, it's, it shows the British in quite a good light in terms of like, they're kind of coach. You've got that gritty defence, haven't you, of Arnhem? The can can we take your surrender? Defense. That surrender, yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, you know that that's that's unapologetically kind of glorifies the that that sort of famous last stand kind mm. of uh, thing, doesn't it? But um, equally, um, and, and I've heard like uh, first like eyewitness accounts of this that the. The way the American soldiers that went across the Rhine for that, uh, you know, to support the cross the capturing of the bridge, um, you know, they rowing across yeah. with, uh, with with wooden oars and stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, that was like just showed incredible courage. And there were wait several waves, and they, the f second wave watched the first wave being obliterated and, mm. and just went straight back in and, and yeah. rowed across as well. So many incredible stories of kind of courage and bravery, really. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. Both nationalities, yeah. Well, three nationalities, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's it's such a good film for its scope of from top yeah. to bottom, isn't it? For the strategic yeah. down yeah. to the tactical, um, and yeah. the the impact of civilian life as well in there, and there's yeah. you know, touches yeah. on that. Um, yeah, it's it no, it's it's fantastic. Um, True. yeah, so many scenes that you kind of you know you, I watched it I watched it again you know whatever it was four or five months ago, and. Every scene, you kind of, oh, I remember this bit. I remember this yeah, bit. And you've yeah. got that kind of feel to it where it's, uh, yeah. yeah, it's very uh, It's very fantastic. Good. I think it captures the, the sense of the huge scale, the strategic plan. And as you say, the, sort of the man looking through the window trying yeah. to aim a pee at, at a yes. armoured half track or something like that. You know, yeah. Hiding the, hiding the loft as the Germans are searching the houses. That's it, yeah. So Brilliant. it's amazing, amazingly well-made film. Brilliant. Okay, so you're number one. Okay, so this is uh, Battle of the Bulge. It was my favourite film, my favourite war film. And um, and actually, it, it's not dissimilar to A Bridge Too Far in terms, I think it's probably made at a similar sort of time. Obviously, it's a much more American film than it is um, a British film. But it was always, when I was growing up, it was always on at Christmas. 
on at Christmas Day, and then they realised that that was a bit wrong to have war films on at Christmas Day. They right. moved, it to, bo- they moved it to Boxing Day. I mean, just <laughs> so we used to we used to watch it every Boxing Day. So I think I associate it with like chocolates uh, being allowed a sneaky little bit of wine, right. um, you know, right. that kind of stuff. But uh, it does the same thing. It tells the the big story. And it tells it from the German perspective quite a bit as well, maybe more than A Bridge Too Far does. Do you see, see these sort of like some different perspectives on the on the battle? Mm. Fascinating. Okay. Yeah. So my number one was your number five, um, yeah. Saving Private Ryan. Um, that's a film that I remember when I went to see it for the first time. I mm. remember the, the the kind of the jovality of the cinema audience at the start of the film. Yeah. You know, the trailers are starting and everyone's a little bit excited. And then from 12 seconds in, yeah. Yeah. everybody, silent, kind of gripping. Yeah. I remember, yeah, yeah <laughs> like, oh, okay, we're in for a, an experience here. And I remember um, there's that scene towards the end of that first long scene where I think it's Tom Hanks and he's looking at the mirror and he's looking at the, and there's the pillbox firing. And I remember trying to think, don't lean, you know, just keep, <laughs> <laughs> don't lean. <laughs> And I was so invested at that point. I mm. mean, you know, I, and I, I know there's some criticism of the film later on and there's some, sure. but in terms of, I mean, what combat was like, I mean, it, it was yeah. absolutely brutal. I mean, so incredible film to me and incredible. I, I, I agree. And it's like, it definitely makes cinematic history, doesn't it? I mean, for a while we used to teach it at school. Um, mm. I mean, it's, it's Spielberg and Hanks, isn't it? To the Scott directors, but this, yeah. This whole idea of trying of not trying to glamorize war in any way and to mm. try and make it, you know, as as, as terrifying and as ugly um, as as possible is something you just don't get with those older war films. You know, right. you know, people people run along and they shot, they keep going and they, <laughs> they, they they hold the flag up and all that stuff. You know, I, I, I'm sure it isn't like that. You know, they yeah. they, they curl up in balls and cry yeah. for their mother and, yeah. and die in front of their people that know them. So. So I thought it was really, really interesting. I think Transform, you got like actually a bit of a platoon, which is a Vietnam War film, mm-hmm. is a kind of came before that yeah. and it kind of covers the, it, it partly glamorizes the start, yep. partly shows the horror of it, the brutality of it. I think it, it you know, it's changed war films and, mm. and, and in a really, really fascinating way. I enjoyed it. I couldn't bear one scene, the scene quite near the end. <laughs> the, 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 the knife fight or the. The knife fight, oh, yeah, and I have I've had nightmares about that. That's the oh, most horrific, that's the most disturbing bit yeah, of film I've yeah, ever yeah. watched in my yeah. life. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, it's I, in fact, in fact, I, I won't watch it again because of that. I mean, I'll watch I'll watch any bit of it, but I won't watch that bit again. There's the the, the only criticism I have of that film is there's that the German soldier and I think people will know what I'm talking about here the German soldier that comes past he walks past the the guy that's kind of been the coward and didn't bring the ammo yeah. up and they they have that kind of look. And he has a very similar look to a guy that surrenders towards the, is it the start of the film? He tries to surrender and they, or they, they don't, they don't kill him. And then you see the same guy towards the end. I can't, I can't remember which order it goes, but he, they look very similar. And apparently they're different actors and they're different. Yeah. But a there's a, person. yeah, but there's a question. I was never about, sure about that. I was never sure when I saw the film, if, but you think about how ludicrous, the unlikely that coincidence would yeah. be that the guy they let off earlier on ends up being the guy that meets them later yeah so yeah i mean it, i think they just look a little alike don't that's they? right but it but, but yeah, that in your me. mind yeah in your mind you yeah like, is that and, and a lot of people were like oh it shows you they shouldn't have let him go or whatever yeah yeah that's the kind of um mm. but what a film and i mean you, you know mm. it's incredible every i mean yeah you're absolutely right it's a very difficult watch that that kind of knife fight and yeah you know it, it's a little bit spoiled i think by people who later commentate well this would never happen you've got to yeah. jab him in the eyes or you know this wouldn't it? but <laughs> oh, it's, it's horrendous and oh yeah, yeah. i mean for it's all involved, so like, so I mean, it's, it's tense it's just one squad isn't it really that you well, i mean i suppose it's a, is it a platoon we've got a captain in charge i suppose it's a is it depleted platoon oh, I'm not sure. know, yeah. it's only a handful of men isn't it? it's like a squad and they um there's a few asle moments in fact where they take that prisoner you've got that uh kind of assault and you've got a machine gun haven't you with a half squad and being attacked by it so yeah. I remember cool. on the on the forums after that film came out, someone listed all of the elements of ASL that were in there, and it was huge. Yeah. It was you know everything yeah. from street fighting to interrogation yeah. to that's true. That's it, true. It, there was a whole list of them. Yeah. Um, you could the um oh what's the what's the name of the Canadian guy that Dorush? Yep, Michael yeah. Dorush. Yep, Michael Dorush. Yeah, produced the uh, the book of how to be a scenario designer. Mm-hmm. Not obviously not the cabbage one. They both produced books, very different books. 
in the back of that book, he shows you how to design a scenario from start to finish, and he uses the final battle scene of Saving Private Ryan as the battle that he's recreating. Okay. And so there is a scenario mm. of sorts, um, and it's quite interesting seeing how he sort of put it together. But uh, right. Yeah, yeah uh, it's it's a great film. It's a um, great film, great film, no doubt about that. Got to got to have some shout outs to films that I kind of wanted to talk about and and, and won't. But um, to Helen Back, the Audie Murphy one, I think it's an excellent yeah. film. Given that Audie Murphy plays it himself, and that's that's a great film to watch. Um, and War of the Rats as well is another yeah. um, is another one which is and the it's a nice scenario, isn't it? Yeah, and 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 I always get them confused. There's Enemy at the Gates, and, I, and Enemy at the Gates, I think, is I'm going to get this wrong around. The one with yeah, Jude Law. that's right. Yeah, so there's that's good. Yeah, and I think that's based on the book. Yeah, War of the Rats or something like. But anyway, there's there's those which are which are. And then there's Stalingrad. Well, Stalingrad is the German film. I think that's an awesome war film. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. These are very we, nearly made on the list. We have to have a a war film session when we're all able to get back and and see each other again. That'd be great. That'd I mean, be really great. And do you know what? It'd be nice if people could tell us perhaps maybe some non-English. I mean, yeah. we don't mention Stalingrad, which is, a, and yeah. you mentioned T-34, but there's, there's got to be a lot of great films that me and you don't know because yeah. they're, they're in Italian, for example. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah we, we're unfortunate. So yeah, give us your yeah. top fives. If you, if you know, yeah. don't doubt we've missed hundreds <coughs> that we should be watching <coughs> and um, yeah, excellent. All right. Good stuff. Okay. So you took on the challenge, Martin, of playing yeah. Toby alone yes. without my help so i mean <laughs> we know how this is going to go but <laughs> so you took on the challenge to play toby on a beach landing um toby loves beach landings you love beach landings this is a, a match made in heaven uh you decided to play when i call roll uh, yeah. which has a fairly unbalanced record mm -hmm. uh let's let's take a look at the scenario um okay. we're up here on uh on the vassal board right now. So do you want to talk yeah. us through the scenario and talk us through yeah. your game thoughts and then we'll talk about, um, or give you Toby's pre-game thoughts as well. Yeah, certainly. So so basically um, the Americans obviously come in from off board. We can't see where the Germans are set up. They've got some, as you can see, their trenches, mines, minefields. It's a relatively small force and they're all half squads and they can't recombine in the game. I think there are uh, perhaps eight, um, there's ten, ten half squads. The Americans have got to come in, in a, a seaborne assault. There are two waves, and they have to exit five uh, points of infantry off FF5, which is the road hex, uh, and they win immediately that they do that. There is an interesting rule that as the Americans capture fortifications or buildings, um, the um, the because the German ELR is four at the beginning, but it goes down one each time a trench or a building hex is captured until it gets to zero, at which point every German unit has to take a morale check. And if it wow. fails, it's eliminated. Wow. So there's a possibility of the Germans sort of just randomly losing half their half their force, I suppose, showing the effect of them becoming dispirited, I suppose, by um by you know these these positions gradually being captured. So my, my thought basically was um, I'll, I'll, I'll bring on the, uh, you know, bring them on, off, on, on the side there and uh, dispersed. The idea being that he might have those tetrahedrons spread around, you know, and I don't want to be sort of forced into them. So I thought this, this way they can, they've got room to manoeuvre around tetrahedrons. Um, and what's and the what's the I, effect of tetrahedrons on? Well, te tetrahedrons can. It's. I mean, I think they. So so they can explode and destroy everything, which that's the worst possible outcome. Um, that's reasonably um, unlikely. I was going to remind myself of the rules just before we went live, but I forgot to. Um, but they also, um, you know, just just pinned the movement. And so you can, you can go over them. They're not like a. Complete... I think that that's right. You can go over them. You got you take a they, you know they'll roll a dice. They're, um, it increases, I think, the chance that you'll bog there, if you know, or the equivalent of bogging. Um, and and there's a possibility that the explosion will destroy the, uh, will, will damage damage the, you know, the guys. And, and potentially, if it, if it destroys the whole thing, it could kill the, every, the, all the units that are in there completely. So I thought that was quite risky. And I was going to, hoping to avoid them, really. And you'll see that I think that I might have made a mistake, actually. Okay. by avoiding them too much you see as that as that comes on but 
my idea really is that the, the first wave will, will land and we're going to be trying to throw smoke because the Americans got good smoke, trying to, the units that have successfully landed are going to be trying to throw smoke and they're going to try to make it a little bit easier for subsequent guys to, to come off. Um, then then really, you can't have multi-hex fire groups on the beaches. I'm just trying, I'm expecting to lose a lot of guys because he's got that anti-tank gun and he's got the heavy machine gun. So expecting to lose guys. Um, but I'm hoping that enough of them survive that the second wave, um, you know, comes along and, um, you know, gradually overwhelms the Germans. That's the plan, really, like just gradually overwhelm the Germans. Bearing in mind that they're all half squads. I mean, I've got them at three to one in, in close combat. Um, so, yeah, that was, that's the plan, really. Right. And Not much of a plan. I mean, it's, well, I mean, we're just going to flick through and yeah. look at your stacks here. So, yeah, yeah I mean, you're right. It's, yeah. it's certainly a, an overwhelming force, but as we know, yeah. beach landings aren't particularly... <laughs> They're not particularly yeah. straightforward. So, no. uh, so the Germans are are hip to start with. Is that right? And you're, yeah. You... So, so most of the German force will become visible the second I move um, one of the landing craft onto the map board. Okay. Okay. I'll see where the tetrahedrons are and all the fortifications. His units will remain hip until they fire. You know, the normal way. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. And yeah. he can set up anywhere on board, or is he? Does he have a particular? He can set up anywhere on board. Um, yeah, pretty much anywhere on board. Yeah, and that's is that bocage there, or is that are they hedges? It's just a hedge. Just, just a, hedge. a hedge. Okay, yeah. all right. So not yeah. not throwing too many. In, in a lot of respects, it's a very straightforward um, scenario. Now you can see there's a there's a seawall, and right. that's very very interesting because it's like a wall. If the Americans can get behind it, they're they're quite a lot safer. They get the plus two advantage of being behind a wall. Right. But it, it, it's it's a very minor obstacle to movement. It, I think that's possibly not true of tanks, but of uh, infantry, they can move over. Mm. But it only gives plus one protection to the people on the sort of German side, if you like. Okay. Um, there's, there's one gap in it, and you can see there, because that's some V7, there's a, there's a gap in the wall there. Um, but, yeah, in lots of ways, this is a very simple scenario. Is Certainly it... once you're off the beach, it's a straightforward scenario. There's nothing complicated here. It's a, it's a very yeah. nice map, isn't it? It's a very clear, clean, nice map. You got, you know, your beach, yeah. your yeah. water, and your, your yeah. hinterland, and, and and off you go. All right, yeah. so let's uh, let's hear what Toby has to say about his pre-game yeah. thoughts, uh, and then we'll get on to the game. Okay, um, Martin loves um, beach landings, <laughs> so um, trying to find an unbalanced one. It looks like when I call roll uh, on raw, at least is um, is seen as pro-American. So I I volunteered to do a, a German defence. But as I constructed my defence, I, I kind of thought, actually, I think this is a, a tough nut to crack. I, I don't think it's as unbalanced as, uh, as its planes would suggest. I mean, my plan basically is to use the tetrahedrons to sort of seal off the eastern um, part of the beach. Um, and uh, the flank, protecting the flank, therefore, of um, my pillbox with the anti-tank gun in. Uh, and I've also concentrated my fortified areas there, you know, the, the trenches and the uh, the pillboxes. So they're protected by the tetrahedrons. On the other flank, the western flank, I've mined the woods, uh, put wire uh, out of line of sight um, in the sort of rear areas there, um, which basically means there's a sort of uh, roughly six hex wide open gap uh, off the beach um, towards the buildings and that I aim to cover with as much fire as I can muster so that's the plan I mean I've put the heavy with the light because I quite like um, lashing out with eight firepower instead of six uh, also because the residual goes down to four instead of uh, instead of two um, but I guess that means I'll forego the, uh, the light machine gun firing on its own most of the time um and the plan is basically to to stop him winning by getting um the um all my fortifications uh, to de to delay um that crucial ptc test when uh, he has to take all the buildings i, I don't think that's going to be an easy uh, task for him and to basically ma make his win depend upon um exiting enough men um that's the plan we'll see how it goes 
Okay, so according to Toby, it's all about his tetrahedrons, and you've been looking yeah. up some rules as well, Martin. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I could correct myself a little bit from earlier. The tetrahedrons are, are not a problem for movement. What they do is that on a it's a little bit like tanks going over anti tank mines. On a one, the landing craft is destroyed and everybody in it is dead. KIA. Mm -hmm. um, or on a two, the landing craft is destroyed, but the uh, the guys on board survive and they can wade in. Right, right. So it's uh, it's it's a it, it, it's it's you know most of your landing craft will make it, but it's quite a big cost for the ones that don't. And so that's a bit like an anti tank mine, I guess. Yeah. For I didn't realize they were explosive. I thought they were just the like the yeah. I think there are types mm. without and right. the types with. But okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay then. So you were clearly confident going into this. You know the. I felt right. good. I felt good. Yeah. Okay. Now okay. you did you do any reading up of landing craft rules? We've we've played landing yes. craft before. You... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I knew the rules when I started playing um, the other day with right. um, Toby, and um, and I think I've got, I've still got them, so I can explain things as as we go along. Yeah, I okay, think, go for the it. most part. Yeah, uh, very very simple. They they're, they're like vehicles. They have got four movement point. These ones you can see that's the top right, and they move one hex per uh, for for each movement uh, right. point. The 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 thing is that once they get to that lighter ocean, that's uh, shallow. And they have to do a bog check. Most of the time, they're going to pass that. It's it's like a, a you know, eleven or twelve or something like that. Would uh, yeah, it's it's actually a twelve that, and they run aground. But you've got a plus one on those landing craft you see at the top there because they're quite large. Mm -hmm. Well, they're mm -hmm. very large. In fact, it's one of the key problems for the Americans really is that there are potentially nearly forty guys in each of these landing craft, and they've all got to come out into one hex. Right. Um, at the end of the game, Toby did say they can spend half of their movement, instead of a quarter of the movement, to get out in the in the hex that the, lamp, the ramp has gone down on. They can pay half their movement point and get out in the ocean hex, essentially climb over the um, over the sides of the of the boat. And right. By doing that, of course, potentially avoiding the uh, the residual that's been okay. placed. For, for, yeah. So anyway. All right. Okay. Onwards. Onwards. Here we go. Okay. So. Okay, so here we go. I'm, I'm. By the way, you can all see the Americans on board these landing craft, but Toby couldn't because of the way we played. Mm -hmm. So normally you'd have these, um, you know, on that sort of cloaking, rider. Yeah, the cloaking the cloaking, device. Cloaking, yeah, exactly, yep. yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. But we can we can see it, but Toby couldn't because of the way that we played. Anyway, right. as soon as um, as soon as that's on, he's putting out all of the fortifications, and this is where I think I make my my first mistake. Now I could. I decide to avoid these landing craft. Um, I should have done that really in the deep ocean and, and, and taken like the shortest route across the, you know, the, the shallow sea hexes. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't want to do was kind of get caught up and end up with a big traffic jam. So I sort of took my chances. Realistically, I, I wonder if now I should have just gone straight through the tetrahedrons. It's clearly going to be the weakest part of his defense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this is what happens. Okay, they're okay. coming on. They 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 passing the the tests, the checks. And so you're taking you're taking um, potential damage adjacent to them. Is that right, or is that no? You're just you're no. just. Oh, they're adjacent just is fine. It's only okay. if I move into them. Yeah. Right. Now I was a little bit surprised. Um, though Toby explained his reasoning. A little bit surprised that he didn't fire the anti tank gun, which can certainly damage these landing craft and the men on board. Um, he 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 calculated. And I, and I think after the game, I agreed with him. That he would, it was going to be more damaging having that fire at them when they were trying to get onto the beach, and that you know taking these less effective shots simply he risked malfunctioning. Right, right, right. And so that was his his calculation. But um, I, I make it to here now. I've spent four movement points. They can't unload. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, they need you know a quarter of the movement points left in order, just like a right. vehicle, I suppose. Right. So they're just sort of. Um, that's just sort of stuck, stuck there, and they can't advance either. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just like a vehicle, you can't advance off uh, a vehicle, you can't advance off right. a landing craft either. This one runs aground. Mm -hmm. See, I rolled an 11 there. Um, and um, essentially, I suspect that's the end That's the end of my turn, isn't it? So it's now the uh, German turn. Oh, no, the, the Germans didn't do anything, I think. So it's now Allied turn two. Right, okay, yeah, it's one so of those the, games where, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and why would he? You know, anything that he does is simply going to reveal, yep. um, reveal his units. Um, 
Uh, so I, I line up my, my second wave. Now, interesting there, because uh, you, you don't get concealment for units inside a pillbox. Um, no, so this is special a special rule. This is right. SSR. Everything begins um, hip. Right. So, but I was just wondering yeah. whether because because he he doesn't get the advantage of having halved fire yeah. against him inside a pillbox. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just fire? Because presumably you know there's something in a pillbox there, so you're going to be firing. I suppose at... so. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. Well, the the only thing that he could fire at in his turn would have been the armored targets of the landing craft. Right. Um, and he calculated that it would be better for him to wait until the the bodies came out of the armor protection. I right. Suppose. And can yeah. the can the passengers of the landing craft fire back out at the pillbox, for example? No. Or is that that's, no. Not... no, not at all. So so the um, the landing craft themselves can fire, but you can see it's got one two firepower um, bow machine gun. Now that's got to that in most instances that's quartered because it's always in motion, etc. But once it's beached, uh, and these I think are, are beached, um, he can they can fire at half firepower, okay. but it's still mounted fire, so it's very unlikely to be effective. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so it's my turn again. So so right, this this guy bit right, so they, they weren't beached. So actually they were at sea. The only one that's standing still is the one that's aground. They weren't beached, they beached for the first point. The second point is this six right. six. I'm with you getting out and of course immediately the heavy machine gun appears okay. and we'll start to see the, uh, the, the the firepower i think it uh it, it lost rate of fire but it kills almost everything else that comes up with the residual okay uh, one half squad makes it and moves up the beach okay. i thought i might as well keep moving these guys because i want you know find out where things are get them to fire especially as it's a half squad and this but is I had a, sorry yeah I was going to say, is this the one where you don't break on the beach, you casually reduce instead? Is that? Yeah, exactly right. right. So it's so you see those those were breaks, those two, three, four, sixes. Right. You have got an increased morale on okay. the beach. You're fanatic on the beach. Mm -hmm. um, but it did occur to me that in reality, I'm sure that on D Day itself, and this is a D Day scenario, that the troops that were sent to, you know, they were sending troops that were very, very specially trained. I'd be su surprised if six morale. First line American right. country best represents them. But yes. you know, the, the scenario is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, so so that's 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 that one unloaded, I think. And it goes into reverse motion. Um next bunch of guys start coming out and they get off relatively unscathed, I think. We get somebody pinned, but they're able to go into a different hex. And uh, we, we're able to move. Now this is actually the most effective uh, landing craft, actually. Then the other guys come off. And it's worth it's worth the, pointing out that you, we're not going to see Toby's rolls, are we? Because Toby rolls dice. Exactly. Yeah. No. And Toby did very well at keeping rate of fire with his anti tank gun, which I think is what's firing now right, right. at this um, at this landing craft that's near the tetrahedrons. And um, do we know where the anti tank gun? It's is? in the. Yes, we do. It's in V two. Uh, perhaps it's not that firing at the moment because he hasn't okay. revealed it, has he? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so in that hex now there is, uh, yeah, there's there's significant casualties in that in that hex. Right. Um, in fact, everything everything's gone. Oh wow. wow! Yeah, everything everything was dis everything was destroyed. Yeah. Next one comes in. That was your nine two as well, yeah. Yeah, Ugh. that's right. And uh, next one lands. Now this is slightly safer. Well, it's 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 not landing, is it? It's just move, moving up to the beach to land next time. Uh, these guys um, managed to. And that one runs aground. Two of them run aground. Um, I'm not sure why to move them off. I think I'm not sure why I moved them off. But I, th I think it's just to clear up the the map a little bit because right. they're technically not on yet. They'd be okay. on that K divider. Right, right, right. Okay. So we start to see some German units being revealed, and he takes a few shots. We see we've got one guy up at the seawall, which was which was quite nice. Mm -hmm. Interesting, there is a significant group with a medium machine gun with the 8-1 and the bazooka team. That's a sort of significant group there. I'm trying to build up a, some sort of um, fire group, if you like, to try and help the other guys get off mm -hmm. the beach. Um, okay. Uh, then, right, anti-tank gun fires right. and actually loses rate of fire. But destroys everything in that hex from that boat. <laughs> um, and this is actually his turn, isn't it? This was that's right. These are the guys that advanced out. 
he destroyed them completely. Right. So I don't know, there's like two or three boatloads of guys who have been absolutely saving Private Ryan's um, already. <laughs> All the guys appearing in the trench, the heavy machine gun um, mm. is, uh, is, 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 is doing its work. And you love beach landings. Well, <laughs> do you know, the thing is, like in real life, mm. there'd be a third wave and a fourth wave. Right. The, wouldn't there? And, and and it would gradually over come mm. they, they describe like coming in like the waves of the ocean, of the Atlantic, you know, right. like one after another. Each wave weakens the defense. Eventually it's overwhelmed by it. But of course, in an ASL scenario, um, that isn't necessarily what you know how it happens because it has to have a, an uh, end point. Now at this point though, yeah, I no, break the heavy yeah. machine gun. Okay. And I think, right, you know, we got some we got some this is good. This is really good. You know, we've got the medium machine gun in action with a negative modifier leader. Um, I was quite excited. I think the whole stack in that hex is broken. And right. you begin, you, yeah. you, I've got a wall advantage. Now I want to go into close combat and start, you know, um, yeah. but, you know, he's he's, he, he's going to have another half squad in there, isn't it? So I've only got a half squad. So if I'm going into close combat, I'm not, I haven't got an advantage. So right. I'm kind of waiting really for to have a little bit more strength up there. But a lot of guys um, making yep. it to the seawall. Yep. Also got a lot of guys getting off the the faster ground. I mean, one of the half tracks was half tracks. Landing craft is faster ground, which means it's essentially, uh, you know, immobilized. Right. Um, didn't think to take the the crew off. I think I could have taken the crew oh, okay. off, and I, I didn't. I didn't didn't do that. Yeah, it's a lot of guys moving forward now. Mm -hmm. Starting mm -hmm. to think. Do you know what? There's a breakout here. There's a mm -hmm. breakout here, and obviously. They're using the smoke there, managed uh -huh. to get a few more guys off. It's it's, yeah. it's looking good, despite the awful casualties. Yeah. It's uh there's but look, I lose the whole another whole boatload. Oh no, they get out. <laughs> they get out. The literal boatload, yeah. You can... Okay, oh yeah, yeah. I think I think I'll lose them in a minute. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah, in that hex actually we're down now to one nine minus one leader in that hex in R five. Yeah, right, yeah, so literally, literally the whole lot. And that was that anti-tank that was just wow. so effective. Advancing fire doesn't uh, achieve anything. I then advance into the mines. <laughs> and this is where, like, you know, playing yeah. someone like Toby, you just, yeah. so I think you're right. I've got, I've got a little bit of, I could have a fire base in there. I can be yeah. a little bit protected. I can use it to launch my assault on those buildings and start lowering his ELR. Um, FF5, it's giving me a route to, to FF5. The heavy machine gun's out of action. Like, I could make some progress here. And I make my fatal error of advancing too much forward. Okay, so watch that happening. Okay. A <laughs> um, uh, few more advances. So this is, you can see how the guys that are wading, far, nearly all fire against them is halved. Right. So actually, wading is not a bad... Yep. Very, very slow, mm -hmm. but this this idea of not chucking everything onto the beach and some of the guys climb over the sides into the water right. is, um, is is actually a, a good strategy, which I didn't particularly employ in this game, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously he's very clever in, in, in terms of how he he's, you know, he's gets guys back to to rally in time. I think he's already brought a half squad forward to take control of the medium, the heavy machine gun in a minute. Anyway... He's of course he's firing all the way down from that anti tank gun, right over those over his own trenches at the guys that have moved into the open ground. Yeah, yeah. and you're going to see this is uh, this is ugly. Okay, broken, oh, geez, yeah, <laughs> broken, <laughs> no. broken. Okay. Yeah. So so all of a sudden a oh. very very positive looking breakout looks 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 horrific. There's some survivors. There's a six six six. There's a nine one. Um, there's like bazookas lying all over the place. It's, I mean, I think in real life, if this was happening, the bazookas would become a significant obstacle to the Americans. <laughs> a trip yeah. hazard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's got a, got a guy moving back towards the heavy machine yeah. gun. He does a little bit, some very clever moving around. Um, he's got broken guys. I mean, there's, there's broken stuff. You know, it's, 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 it, you know, if he wasn't such a good player, it could have collapsed. I think that's the, yep. that's the truth. Anyway, I'm going to route these guys back into the wire, um, <laughs> but he can see them from V4, right? So he can carry on DMing them. Oh no, he can't see them from D4. He can see them from the pillbox in W4. 
Okay. So you can carry on DMing them in W10, yep. which is like my sort of rally point indefinitely. Right. So that's so obviously I'm going to have to take some action uh, because of that, and you'll see how that plays out in a minute. Okay. So it's all <laughs> this uh, clever, sneaky moving. Um, I'm a little bit confused what term we're in at the moment. Oh, it's still it's axis. Same still four, axis. axis four. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think we're. So this must be Allied 5 okay. now, although we haven't moved it on. Okay. So again, getting, getting some, yeah. some significant stuff adjacent to those trenches. Yeah. Um, and now we've got more guys running up the beach, and they're yep. making it up. So there's like a, a second wave. Is, yeah, is this coming seems, in. This seems it's okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and we're advancing across there. I'm feeling yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. DMs the guys in WT, I think. But... He gets. He does very well with um, W eight. I think breaks the squad there. I can't remember where that shot came from. Um, and I think he pins the leader. No, he pins the four, five, three, four, six in U four. So I can't advance into close combat with the half squads, which right, is what I want right, to do right. without. Uh, yeah, I don't want to send the leader on his own. Yeah. Um, okay, where are we going now? So. Okay, so a minute I'm gonna so I route back to there, and, and I mean even think, putting the wire in that bottom corner, like I would never have put the wire. It's genius. Yeah, it's genius. Yeah. It just puts me in such a mess, and it's gonna get worse. You'll see in a minute how it gets worse. I mean now my attack is now one hero with a bazooka <laughs> in um, in X six. That's the only significant force I've got going forward. And I don't think he's lost anything yet. I mean, he's got right. some broken units, but nothing yeah. really. He's lost some time, anyway. Martin. You've, you've spent him some time. That's what he's lost. <laughs> <laughs> He'll never get that time um, back. Yeah, he's got the heavy machine gun back a little bit, yeah. and he's about to advance forward. So this, this is his turn, isn't it? So I've got a little bit... Some of my shots were okay. Potentially quite effective, but he was able to skulk out of my way. Mm -hmm. uh, nasty. No, no, right. This is clever. I thought move the guys back into the wood that he can't fire at. Yep. And of course, there's a minefield there. Oh, no. <laughs> so <laughs> now, did you did you do it one at a time, or did you? No, I did them all together. Of course, I did. So, so the thing is, right yeah. now, this is literally disastrous. There's a lot of force in that wood. But yep. they've got a rally. Yep. Under fire, some of them. Yep. If they don't, when they do rally, they've then got to move out of the hex, taking a, the six firepower minefield attack, which of course is going to break these American into, into wire. <laughs> yeah, into wire. <laughs> or it's head just, back to the landing craft. And, and, and <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just. I mean, yeah. it's so inspirational watching watching him smash you to pieces like this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And uh, so everything I try is is, is, is failing. Um, he's, Toby was a little bit worried about me getting forces adjacent to those trenches, but I never quite managed to bring the attack home, as you'll see. Here, I've got another attack moving in. But don't forget, I've only got to get five points of infantry off FF5. Yep. So I'm still thinking, maybe I could be sneaky. There's a way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Toby was worried about sort of board edge creep. That's partly why he puts all the mines yep. and the yep. wire down at the bottom there. But look, it's a You're significant right, yeah. force. Yeah, yeah it's a yeah. significant force um, moving moving up there. German turn. Um, that's my. Oh, that's yeah, my you've got two two more there. turns left. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So press forward. I think that's a good. There's good advances um, here. I've even got a close combat with a hero. Uh, of course, um, he, he he dies in close combat. Um, and then it will be the German turn, won't it? Am I still moving forward? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's moved that. Yes, yeah, the prep fire. I don't think. Yeah, breaks the breaks the, yeah. the squad in. He swallowed X, your bazooka as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there was just a, a, a absolute carry on in the in the woods. Do you guys, your guys came back though in the minefield. They all look like they're. They're all back, right? Nice. And they actually give me a slight chance of winning because with the leader, I think they can just about they can still get off. Right. I mean, right, I know right. they've got a lot to get through and they've got to roll yeah. well on the mines on yeah. the wire. Yeah. But they yeah, they can it's not impossible. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he dies. Um this guy here, <laughs> don't know where he's going really. Um 
pressing forward, trying, but everything seems to be breaking. I think it's at this point that I give up. Yeah. Right. Because right. the guys in the minefield. Yeah. Yeah, break. yeah. yeah. And I need those points. That's right. right. Because there's, there's two turns. They could theoretically get off FF5. Right, 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 um, right. But um, that, that makes it impossible. In fact, that's right. The guy in Z8 was trying to move in the open in order to get into a position where he'd be able to get off next turn. So assuming Toby didn't fire it. <laughs> so I see one broken half squad there. Did you did you do any other damage to his troops? Yeah, uh, so I broke quite a few things. I broke the heavy machine gun and there were about three half squads in that hex right. at the right. time. So you know that's why that breakout looked kind of quite hopeful for yep. a moment because you know he did actually kind of collapse a little bit. There was uh, there was only like one half squad left but you know, you saw me trying to take advantage of it. By, by yeah. the, I should never have multi-stacked the hexes. I and mean, that was just a mistake, wasn't it? But, um, you know, it's, that was, that it's was, easy to do, isn't it? When you're disheartened by yeah. a, a big defeat or a big setback, yeah, you think, oh, God, just, just get back. And and yeah. suddenly you're punished again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, it, was, it was brilliant. And do you know what I thought, and, and to what well, Toby thought, and that with the way that it was set up, that he'd set up, it wasn't hugely yeah um skewed in favor of the of the attackers yeah. and in fact like you know fair play to mmp this is a really good scenario right. actually it's in, in some ways it's very simple yeah for, as yeah. far as see you know once you've got your head around seaborne assault rules yeah. it's not a complex one but um but that's a very very clever scenario i think i should for the second wave i should have gone straight through the tetrahedrons mm -hmm. outflanking the anti-tank gun mm -hmm. um the heavy machine gun, as it happens, um, the, the the crew manning it broke. Right. So for a little while, he'd have just had his little half squads yep. against yep. against the swarming American force, and um, you know I could have got into close combat with that um, crew, whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I should have done. And if I'd have lost one, yep. it wouldn't have been as bad as how yep. many I lost. Yeah. Entering yep. under the sights of that of that gun. Right. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. Well, let's hear what Toby has to say about the end. Yeah, and, um, let's uh, yeah, let's catch up from him. Oh well, that um, game went about as well as I could possibly have, <laughs> have imagined. Really, um, the uh, the tetrahedrons did uh, dissuade Martin from uh, from blasting through them and just taking his chances, um, which meant that that uh, landing craft couldn't beach as quick as the others he had a couple of um bogs or, or, or landing craft becoming grounded so um i suppose the the men inside them um leapt out uh at different points and i was able with um you know um good fire and for the anti-tank gun and the, the heavy machine gun primarily and the uh, residual firepower they were putting down <clears throat> to really shred those uh, americans coming on the minefields took their toll, um, and uh, the 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 area between the, the open ground really did become a rather a, a killing zone. Um, so yeah, the plan the plan worked. Uh, to put it bluntly, I suppose it did make me think that perhaps what um, a, a good tactic for the Americans to do is to you know the first unit comes out as the ramp goes down and then um if the uh, germans shoot at him lay resid down perhaps just as in the uh, the film you know saving private ryan the rest of the americans just leap over the side of the landing craft okay it takes half their movement points but um they avoid crucially the residual um i think that makes sense and perhaps also i think there is an argument to um to use them on mass, you know, for all together, um, and perhaps wait until the second wave landing craft have also beached, and then basically unload all the landing craft, seven or eight, however many have managed to not get grounded, unload them all at the same time, and thereby reduce the uh, the amount of shots, good shots that the uh, the Americans can can have. And sure, I suppose you lose a turn of movement with the first wave, but um, I think you've got you've got a decent amount of time in that scenario. 
Um, yeah, perhaps perhaps that's a, a useful plan to use. But I think against a, you know, a, a cunning German defence, it's no walkover for the Americans. Um, it, it, the mine placement, well, everything, everything is key. They, they haven't got a large force, the Germans. Um, so you have to be very careful how you place your units. But um, anyway, my my placement worked. <laughs> so, uh, but it was a good game. Um, and also, uh, anyone will see that I, I didn't shoot at all at the landing craft, uh, partly because I couldn't be bothered to <laughs> go through all those torturous rules. But also, I I just felt that I'm better off shooting at when I know I can affect something. You know? So these infantry, either in the water or onto the beach, uh, my my machine guns and, and um, shells will definitely affect them. And um, I know there's not much chance of rolling a double six, but you know it does happen. And it would be a terrible shame to waste, um, to have sort of pinging shots off landing craft and they're not really doing anything. So I decided to wait until all the infantry were vulnerable. But yeah, good game. So very interesting from um, from Toby there around you know how he's going to um, just decide not to shoot mainly because he couldn't be bothered, but also because of the the lack of uh, chances to an effect. And that that seems like some good good yeah. advice there. Um, it, I do think it's interesting because the rules are quite complex for firing at landing craft. I mean, it took me some time to get my head around them. I think I understood them. But it was a complete waste of time because, yeah. of course, because it, is it the still the double small and the moving target and all that kind of stuff? It's it's all quiet. Yeah, you've got all that kind of stuff. The the thing is that because these are armored targets, but that but the rounds will go like an arm, it will go through. Um, right. Essentially, it's the metal box, isn't it? So the anti tank will go through it. Probably not do that much damage to the landing craft, but you get the um, uh, collateral attacks to the guys inside. Right, so right. that's one way of like trying to harm the the Americans. The other way is you fire high ex high explosive, which has a better chance of actually sinking the um, the landing craft. So you certainly can damage it, but the only effective weapon he had was the anti tank gun, mm. and I think he's right. I think you, know, you, you destroy you, if you damage that if you break that yourself. You, yeah, you, you malfunction that, and it's your best weapon gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely a glass half full type person on that. Where yeah. I think okay, if it's a critical hit. And I wipe yeah. out a whole landing craft. That feels like yeah. a good, a good you, outcome. You don't even need a critical hit to right. do it. Um, you do need to roll pretty low, but um, okay. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it looks good, and it hasn't yeah. put you off. Hasn't put you off landing. Uh, do you know what it hasn't? I really think more people should play them, and yep. um, I think that I think they're really exciting. They're they're what ASL was designed for. I think it's uh, <laughs> it's exciting. I love to see the, the lines of men charging up the beach. Now you missed getting, out. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> go on, go on. no 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 please go that's on. it i'm finished i'm finished oh sorry um i, I was talking to indy this week and we, we were yeah. scheduled our chat with him and there was two things that, that i wanted to talk to you about one was he said he's never played a landing craft scenario yeah. uh or ne and, no, never played night never, scenario, never played night scenario and you know these are it's night and landing craft i think and caves maybe are the ones that yeah um a lot of people tend to avoid and they are all worth playing aren't they? at least once just to yeah to play yeah. the other thing that i said we'll have to you'll have to look up he said that if you're ever in a rules argument with anybody, just point out rule 15.22 to them. And I'll leave it for you yeah. to look up afterwards. Okay. But it's, it's right. a perfect example of... And this just, is A, yeah? Yeah, a just exactly. Just just let them... He, he said he said he was having a conversation with someone and he said, I'm going to go get a cup of tea, but the answer's in 15.22. I'm going to go make a cup of tea. And uh, so I'll leave it to you to, to figure that one out. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway. Right. Let's talk Patreons. We're going to do this giveaway. Yeah. Um, so, Martin, I would like a number, to, please, from 1 to 58. It's our active patrons um, in alphabetical order of their first name, all lined up. Uh, winter bonus okay. pack four. We've got a commissar pack. Uh, we've got yeah. an operations journal and two. Give me a number, please. Just before I do, wouldn't it be interesting to know just how many weeks of non-stop playing are represented just by that little free giveaway? Amazing, wouldn't it? I, and you know right. what? I can I could actually tell you, um, but yeah, because yeah. on the on the yeah. archive you can see Not how right many now. hours. <laughs> yeah, but you can yeah. see how many hours of play available. Okay, go for right, it. I'm in random random.org. I've put in minimum one and maximum fifty eight, yep. and the number is twenty eight. Twenty eight is Kevin Duval. Uh, Kevin. 
these uh, these packs are off to you. I will get in touch with you. Uh, I know you're in the middle of our tournament right now. So uh, congratulations. Yeah. I'm going to send this stuff over to you. Um, right, good stuff, Martin. Well done. Um, Excellent. Anything else before we before we head off? I have ticked everything off on our list to talk about. So. Very impressive. Very impressive. Well, well played today against Toby. Um, mm. That's that's not an easy an easy challenge. Um, <laughs> we may be going to the tournament. I'm not sure if you're going yet to the double one tournament. If it's still on in June. Yeah, no, I'm still in. I'm still in two minds. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see if we can but, convince you. But if not, yeah. we can might might be able to make a illuminating round special if you can make it. And if not, that'd be cool. Oh, make one there. Yeah, well, maybe. A, like maybe. a, a live, I don't know, we'll, do, we'll figure something out. If, if you can make it, but if okay. not, if not yeah, then yeah. we won't. So we'll let the yeah. let the guys beg yeah. you to go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Martin, until then, thanks very much. Take care. Bye, all. Bye. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> I, hadn't pressed, I pressed the wrong button.